So I'm Phil with uh, Rabbit Elephant here, and I have a little Ableton uh, trick here uh, that we use for our live hybrid slash studio rig. And I just want to go over that real quick and the problem uh, we're trying to solve with this whole thing. And then we can talk about the little trick. Uh, and uh, hopefully it's usable for other folks too. But uh, this is our rig. It's, you know, just uh, we use. Uh, the tool to add all the parameters. But basically what a rig is, is a bunch of modules um, and a bunch of MIDI controllers. That's basically it. Don't worry about this stuff. Uh, I gave a talk uh, at the SMEM just recently about, and I brought this this case, this is actually two cases, and explained the, uh, the matrix routing uh, system, which is all these buttons in this ma uh, macro knob here. But it basically just pretend each one of these buttons is kind of like a knob. Uh, and then we have a bunch of other stuff, faders for, for track volume, send levels. We have effects parameters we can adjust. Um, and so basically all this stuff is, we, we go into Ableton, and, and those are all MIDI controls. We just hit record right here. And all of those parameters get recorded into, um, all those parameters get recorded into automation. Uh, and we can go back and edit. So basically what we do is we just hit the record button and just start moving stuff. So um, right now uh, I have this uh, pink voice, which is a software instrument track, and that's comprised of a silent wave voice, voice controller, which sends out control data to the ADAT 1560 line of the UFX. And then it, the audio, the actual audio from this instrument comes in down here. So that's it right there, turn the reverb off. So that I'm moving stuff on the modular to my left here, which you can't see, unfortunately. Um, you know, I can, do whatever I want uh, to that sound. So if I want to sequence it from here, so here's just, you know, set of pulses, uh, I can. So that's great, we can make all kinds of sequences here, nothing crazy. Um, the thing is, when you're working on modular though, um, we we have this way to basically record all of this automation, which is hugely powerful. We tried finding a way to do it with the modular, where and it just turns into a monster, it turns into a huge uh, audio uh, DC coupled audio routing matrix, you know, uh, huge, huge ones. And then also you lose some of the patchability, right? Because it's like, well, can I send this over here? What about feedback loops? Like, so what we did was we just started to, to, to concede and just keep the modular volatile, uh, which is really what it wants to be, I, I think. You know, I think it's a great volatile instrument, which is why uh, I think people like them so much. You know, if you wanted the fixed patch stuff, you would just you know, get a traditional synth or something like that, or use a plugin, which we use too. So that's the nice thing about the hybrid. You get the boast of both worlds. The thing with modular is you have to record this audio. If you want to make songs with this and edit that data into any sort of like meaningful arrangement, um, some people can do this really well from only the modular and only in hardware. Um, there's several limitations, not several, there's, there's tons of limitations with with that and what you can do and what you can arrange and what you can actually do with your two hands on the fly. And so we kind of, we did that for a while with a couple of octa tracks and it was great for certain kinds of music, especially loopier bass music. But when you wanted to make more like song songs, it gets a little hairier to arrange. And some of those harbor sequences really aren't great when it comes to like macro arrangement. Whereas a DAW, it's like insanely easy. It's fast. It's actually you know, if you account for how much headache you get in the hardware, turning encoders and pushing buttons on a sacrificed UI, the doll just blows it out of the water. I don't mind using a clicky mouse if we're in this hardware, which we can be, because we've given a knob access to all of this stuff, um, you know, and we can record it all as vector data. Uh, you know, it's it, it means you're spending way more time here anyway. If you spend 10% of the computer and 90% of the hardware, you're, you're like killing it, okay? Even 50-50 is killing it. Um, so we're happy with that, modular is modular, but we have to record the audio. So we have this, this voice control track, which is a MIDI on the input, and then it's an instrument track, so it's MIDI on the in, and then it, it at some point catches the audio, which is right here with this external audio effect. This pink is the, the modular. So, you know, that's it there. And we want to record this basically right at this point, right at this point. So we, we have a pre-effects um, audio track uh, set from the pink, and we can just record. I can just hit, you know, I, I don't actually use session view too much, uh, so I'll do it here. And as I record uh, this this thing, I can move things that are not automated, like like uh, the natural gate openness, right? And it'll record that. I can change the pitch to oscillator. I can change the patch around, you know. You, know, you can do all kinds of stuff volatile uh, way. and uh, But we can also record all the effect sense. 
right? Okay, and uh, what we have here, I don't want to go uh, crazy here, but we have some stuff we changed. Uh, let's look at the uh, A return, uh, you know, stuff like that. There we go. So all this stuff, let me go back to our arrangement. So that parameter is recorded. The, you know, uh, anything I moved, you know, if I can overdub, I can just hit this again. Uh, for overdub, I'm going to turn this recorder off because I want to keep this original. And I can just, yeah, I can hit record and, you know, change the volume. I can change this, this FN, send. I can change anything, anything I want, okay, about that. And uh, it's super awesome. You know, we kind of just leave the recorder running for an hour and do a huge jam. And we find little pieces like that part right there is good. This part right here is good. Now we can start arranging a song out of this stuff. Um, yeah, you have to disregard this uh, permit to permutate. Uh, this guy should not be on there. Sorry, sorry. Uh, let's get rid of this guy. Let's just turn that off for a sec. Yeah, so anyway, we've recorded all this automation and we have the audio. The problem is all of this automation here is on the wrong track because if I want to play this, right? Let's just let's just hear it. You know, here's here's let's see. Oop. That's what it sounds like right now. I haven't touched the module. I haven't changed the patch, but let's say I do. Right? Sounds different. I could I could completely change the wires. You know, the patch key was around. It would be you could use a different oscillator. You could use no oscillator. So you know, already I've lost it. But it's over here, okay? So we remember what it sounded like. Uh, let's just demo this real quick, okay? And let's just hear what that sounds like. We'll just solo it. Uh, let's see. So that's the original, but if you remember, there's a huge reverb swell here. There's volume changes. We're not getting any of that. All I'm getting is the raw audio. We need to send this into this, this send. And for a while, I couldn't figure out how to do that. What I was doing was copying this automation one at a time into this uh, track, okay, one at a time. And I copy this, copy, okay, there you go. Whoops, whoops, I put it on the wrong track. So, you know, you gotta go click here, then you gotta paste it. Whoops, uh, let's see, copy. It's already painted, but you can get where I'm going with this. It's just a huge nightmare, and you gotta do that for everything. Furthermore, all of these EQ settings, I could have been, uh, let's let's kill this again, because we, we get the idea, you know, you have to, you have to, reapply all that manual it's it's brutal right um and so we want to send this back into this uh and you know uh uh get all this data i may want to like just edit the volume you know just here and here i may want to overdub re-record the volume with the, with the faders you can do all this editing stuff you can move it around you can you can do song stuff you can do mixing stuff now but not lose like the original nice cool modular stuff furthermore you can edit this you, know, you can say like ah this one went on, this jam went on too long. I really just need this, and I just need to like loop that. You know what I mean? Uh, let's see, Oop. you know, do, 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 do. And, and that's now my, my thing, right? So you can do all this stuff, but we need to get this into this so we can get all these send levels, all these effects. If we if we move this, you know, if we EQ this with this uh, this SSL uh, plugin here, which by the way, we have knobs for us, so if we had moved all these, it would have also recorded all these movements, right? So, you know, if I, if I, if I do something like this, uh, I'll just do it over here for now, blah, blah, blah. I can move all these things around. You can see like, you know, okay, maybe that, maybe I need to change that. So it'd be nice to send the audio from this into this track before any of the mixing plugins and things. So we need to basically send it right after this, okay? And the way to do that is actually with the, uh, I use a compressor because it's super lightweight. I turn the dry wet all the way down because I'm actually using it as a compressor. I'm actually doing a little trick here with this solo button. So I'm gonna take the side chain input, I'm gonna take the audio from the pink record audio, this audio track here, pre-effects, right? Um, in my case, you can do whatever you want, but I do a pre-effects, because really there's nothing on this track I want. Like I, I have automation here, but I don't actually want any of that. You know, I can even delete it, it doesn't matter. This track volume doesn't even matter. So anyway, this is just this audio. So that's gonna get sent into this track side chain input. Um, the problem is right now, uh, you know, you can see all the automation is still there, right? So this is being sent. We have to turn it on. Uh, and now, oops, there we go. Now we can have this. Now we can have this track here being sent through this uh, bottom track with all of this end and volume and all that stuff as it were originally. You know, if we just done this, it would be exactly the same as it originally sounded. If you remember from a little bit ago. And 
you know, as I'm doing, as I'm playing this, I'm moving modular stuff. I'm unplugging wires. Um, you know, I'll just make this some di very different frequency. If we if we now play the live thing from the modular through this track as we we were originally, um, this is what you would you would hear because I moved everything around, right? So, right, whatever that is is now different. I lost it. Maybe it's the next day. I took the patch down, but I have the original here, and I can get to it just by clicking this on. And now I have the original stuff with all the send automation, all the volume. I can change like, oh, that, you know, it's it's way too loud here. Okay, so let's let's, you know, I could delete it. You know, I could do, I could re-record the the automation. I can just hit record and make sure the record here is off. I can just hit record real quick and redo that volume. Or maybe the, I have too much reverb, right? Turn the reverb down. Right? All that stuff. So it's really powerful, and the way you sort of get around uh, that is using the sidechain. But now you may want to select, and unfortunately, this is not MIDI mappable, this little solo button here. What is MIDI mappable is track on and off. So if I, that's the live, I'm moving some knobs here, right? That's the live thing. And I turn the compressor on, and that's the original. So you get the best of both worlds. You can MIDI map this on and off, and basically it's like an A-B selector switch for where you want the audio to come from. But the, the, the beauty is that it's still applied through all of your chain, and it's super elegant, clean, easy way to do it. Uh, I'll probably, um, I just came up this last night, um, and I'm sure other people have uh, you know, figured this out, so kudos to them. But I'll probably map this to like a toggle switch or something very visual where you can see like, oh, yeah, that's why it's not live. Although it's pretty easy to tell sometimes. You can just move something at the output uh, on the modular and tell like, oh yeah, yeah, it's coming from the audio. But at that point, you're probably working more on the computer anyway, uh, getting closer to the, towards the end of the song. So anyway, that's a little tip there. Uh, sorry it took so long to explain. It was kind of a uh, complicated uh, 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 sort of a special thing for, for people that are kind of trying to do something like this where they want to use both a DAW and, and a modular to move a song forward and, and arrange things, you know, uh, all, all the powerful things the DAW has um, in a nice, clean, uh, uh, easy workflow. So anyway, that's, uh, that's all I got on this one. Uh, you know, have a nice day. Uh, see you. Uh